All right, hello everyone. It is February 10th, 2020, and I'm finally getting to a point where I can get these seeds started. So I'm gonna show you what I got first. I got a pack of four different seeds. I'll kind of just talk about each of them. Actually, I'm gonna split these up a little bit. Okay. So, I got Common, Butterfly, Showy, and Bloodflower. Uh, for starters, I will mention that the first three are all native to my area, which is southern Wisconsin, um, zone 5A in terms of hardiness. This is not native to my area, but I will talk about why I still get it and where it is native and all that stuff in a second. Um... So definitely the most common, <laughs> common milkweed around here is common. Um, it's what we mostly see growing naturally. And uh, it's, I really like it because obviously it's native to the area. It's blooms are really pretty. And it also has big wide leaves, which are good for um, feeding caterpillars. So I really like to use this as my main staple milkweed in my butterfly garden. This is butterfly weed, which is also native to the area. Um, a lot of people don't think that it's milkweed by just looking at it. But one way you can see is the how similar these all these flowers are. Um, this has very thin leaves and does not produce as much sap as common or showy milkweed. So that's another reason why it kind of tricks people. Um, and I've mentioned this a little bit recently, but milkweed and hoyas which is a popular house plant are actually these in the same subfamily which i will put on the screen because i have no idea how to pronounce it <laughs> um so yeah butterfly weed's another one i'm growing showy which is basically pretty similar to common but it's got these um super uh, like spiky crazy looking flowers so that's where it gets its name because it's flowers are just just a bit more its flowers are just a little bit more um fancy I guess you could say than the common milkweed and then this is blood flower or tropical milkweed and this is mostly native to the southern United States and Mexico I like to grow it as like an annual up here I just think it's really pretty it's another option for them this kind of milkweed and the butterfly milkweed do not need to go through a process known as cold stratification. And I'll get what, to what that is in a second. Um, but I like having two different seeds that I can just put in the ground and it can just go whenever I tell it to. Um, or in seed starters or whatever. So I like having a couple that I can just throw in a seed starter and just have as extra options for the butterflies and other pollinators. Because... Um, milkweed flowers are pretty good for all pollinators. They smell great. Um, they're pretty. Bees love them. All butterflies and moths love them. So why not have extra pretty flowers in the garden? Um, and like I said, um, milkweed is the number one way you can help the monarch butterfly by planting it. So by giving them options, you are giving them a greater chance in the wild. Um, these two milkweeds need to go through a process called cold stratification, which is something I will show in this video. And basically that means I'm going to put them into um, wet paper towel in a baggie and put them in the fridge for two weeks to a month. And then after that is when I will get them into seed starters. Um, basically... I am trying to best mimic the process that they go through in nature. In the fall, these flower, um, these flower um, buds will go into, turn into pods, which distributes the seeds. The seeds would land, um, you've probably seen the silk flying around in the fall. Um, the seeds would land, be under cold, wet soil for many months. And then once um, the sun comes out and spring hits, they know it's time to germinate. So I basically have to tell these seeds 
the same information. So I will be, for our purposes, I will just be showing the common today just to kind of show you how I do it. There's many ways you can do it. If you go to Pam's Pretty Plants on YouTube, she just did a really cool video on doing winter sewing in milk jugs. Um, but I'm ju I just thought I'd stick to super basic, you know, starting seeds and then um, showing you how I harden them off and stuff. So we'll be closely following the common milkweed and I'll show you these got uh, this butterfly weed once that gets started. I will probably start this along the same time I do the common milkweed. So um, yeah, let's get into it. So yeah, what I'm going to be doing to replicate the natural cold stratification process is I'm going to put these seeds and the showy milkweed in wet paper towels in either baggies or um, deli containers. You can use Tupperware, anything, for about two weeks to a month in the refrigerator. Here, so these are the common milkweed seeds. Um, all varieties look pretty much the same. They go through the same um, pod to seed process. You'll usually see these in the fall attached to a fuzzy piece of floss. Um, and those help the uh, seeds blow away at the wind and get carried elsewhere to go germinate. So this is what the seed looks like without the floss. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to... This one's already wet and ready, but I'm going to get this paper towel in this deli container wet and and I will be putting the seeds into both of these containers. Alright, so I'm just going to use this spray bottle, get this paper towel nice and wet. Like so. You want it pretty wet but you don't want it to be like a puddle. And here's some more seeds. I'll just kind of sprinkle, sprinkle them around. If you ever watch uh, Mr. Lund's Science on YouTube, he's by far my favorite monarch channel to follow. Um, he, This is the same process, well, close to it, that he uses. So yeah, just kind of evenly distribute them, make sure they're all wet. I might even spray them again. And then the last thing I'm going to do before I pop these in the fridge is write today's date on the top. So when I put them in the fridge, I can keep an eye on them. They won't do anything in there, um, but I will check and make sure and like, if, you know, so I would take these out March 10th if I was going to wait, um, a month as opposed to two weeks but I might try one of these in two weeks and one of these in four weeks so we will follow up with them once some time has passed um, just wanted to show you the back of the seed packet because it's actually super helpful um, gives you all the growing instructions so um, this basically tells that tells us what we're going to do once these seeds are ready to sow. So we did exactly what they said. Um, moist paper towel, fold it. I might put some paper towel on top. I don't know. I did this just like this last year and it worked fine. Um, insert it into a plastic bag and then put it in the fridge for two weeks. So yeah, once these guys are out, they will need sun or grow lights in this case to germinate. And then, yeah, so once time has passed and we get these guys going, I will keep you updated. Um, I hope this series is helpful in your endeavors in planting a butterfly garden. So feel free to get your seeds, follow along with me, and thank you for planting some milkweed. So as I mentioned before, the way I cold stratified those seeds is not the only way that you can. Um, please check out um, Mr. Lund Science's video as well as Pam's Pretty Plants video down in the description below. 
Um, you can also look up any different ways online. Um, I'll say this again and again, sorry, but planting milkweed is the number one way to help the monarch butterfly. Um, and it's a way all of us can help and milkweed also benefits, benefits, <laughs> words are hard, all other pollinators as well. Um, you can pick up milkweed from nurseries, but please be sure to ask if they have sprayed the plants because a lot of times nurseries will spray all their plants with something called BT. I don't know how to pronounce it, so I'm going to put it down below. Um, and that actually kills caterpillars and any other anim um, bugs that might be um, attracted to the plants. So you can get milkweed starts, just be sure to ask. Um, if you did get these starts in the past and they were toxic, they will come back non-toxic the next year or when they're cut back. So if you've already picked up milkweed that might have been contam contaminated, however you want to look at it, um, by all means, um, don't feel bad. Um, but if you're looking to plant any more as a plant, just check in because that would be against kind of the point of getting a plant for butterflies. So yeah, um, now all we do is wait for these seeds to have their time in the fridge. And then in a few weeks, we will take them out and plant them and see them sprout. So that's exciting. Um, in the meantime, we are also waiting for the data to come back from the overwintering sites in Mexico, which I will touch on once that date information is in. So thank you for watching. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe and hit the little bell so you don't miss future content. And if you have any questions, leave a comment down below. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.